I'm gonna try to keep this video short, even though the wish list is uh, pretty long. Anyways, uh, number one is the speed. The last time Texas Instrument introduced uh, a calculator was uh, not too long ago, in 2019. I don't have that model with me. That is called the TI Inspire CX2 and uh, CX2 CAS. And it is still compared to the first generation HP Prime that came out in 2013, so six years apart. The Inspire CX2 is a lot slower than uh, this one right here, so that is just uh, unacceptable. You know, not only Texas Instrument makes the most expensive calculator on the market, but at the same time, their calculators are literally the slowest on the market as well. So for the pound for pound, Texas calculators are not worth the money, not by a long shot. That's the reason why I didn't buy the Inspire CX2 CAS, because it's just a, you know, it's just a ripoff. It is, it's literally a ripoff. The only difference between that one and this CX right here, CX CAS right here, is that uh, it has a Python, so you can program uh, using Python on that one. Plus, it has a, you know my, some some minor um, some more functions, not a lot, just a couple more functions. That's about it, really. And also the speed, it is faster than this one. Actually, it is considerably faster. I think maybe twice, uh, two times faster. But for someone who who is, who is used to uh, uh, with who is used to uh, the HP Prime, that's that, that is still that that's still that is still not fast at all. You know that is not fast enough. So for the money, Texas Instrument can do a lot better. You know, Texas Instrument is making way more money with uh, their calculators compared to HP. So there is no reason for them to not you know to not give us uh, a faster calculator. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is uh, the display. Uh, the display is good actually. It's a color display. So the only complaint I have about this display is the fact that it is uh, co it is fairly small. You know, again, I'm always gonna compare these uh, uh, two calculators. I'm I'm always going to compare the TI Inspire CX to the HP Prime because that's the only competition really. Uh, Casio uh, make uh, uh, computer algebra system calculators as well, but. Uh, these two are the most uh, present, the, the, uh, the brand that are the most uh, present uh, in the uh, uh, calculator world, really, uh, at, at least here in the US, like in college and stuff, it's either HP or, uh, or Texas Instrument. So the display needs to be slightly bigger and also touchscreen. So I can't really emphasize the advantage of, of the touchscreen, you know, I can't emphasize it enough. HP is the only calculator that's, uh, or should I say HP is the only brand that took the touchscreen to the, to, to a next level, you know. I'm probably never going to pick up, uh, well, I'm not going to say never, but I'm probably, at least I'm not going to pay a full price for the Casio uh, FX, I think it's FX something, uh, 500 or 400. You know, that one has a, a touchscreen, but you are required to use a pen with it. I don't, I don't really want all that stuff. You know, that's just extra stuff that really is not necessary. You know, so I don't like that. So let me show you what I'm talking about by the uh, uh, touchscreen implementation. So as you can see, I'm graphing here, and if I go to my uh, symbolic view, so here I have uh, two uh, expressions here. I have two equations, but once when, when I, I, I try to graph both uh, equations you only see one that's because the window is not uh is not adjusted for the second one you can either adjust the window or you can just uh, since it is touchscreen you can just uh, scroll over this is because uh this second graph is not going to start graphing till uh it's only going to start graphing at x is equal to 30. so the x axis the x axis axis is going to be 30 here so as you can see you can just uh, zoom it and it's not even going to regraph uh, the equation so this is how handy the touchscreen is plus you can even zoom in and zoom out so this is really handy and keep in mind keep in mind this one came out in 2013 and texas instrument just released uh, uh when i say just you know three years in in the ca in calculator world is not really uh, a long time okay so i really want to see a touchscreen and a bigger display with uh, the next Texas Instrument calculator. So number three, this is uh, really important. This is actually very important to me. Uh, as you already, as some of you might know, I actually like to uh, purchase uh, used calculators, uh, calculators that are broken and I try to fix them myself, you know. But <laughs> Texas Instrument, when it comes to uh, the uh, repairability, 
Texas Instruments is uh, is just a joke. You know, it's a it's, it's a it's a big joke. So last week I tried to take this apart, but this thing is uh, it's a solid calculator. But the way it was designed, it, uh, there is no way for you to uh, be able to replace the display if uh, you happen to break it, which which happened to me last week. You know, I took it apart, and uh, the display is uh, is. It's not well. It's actually it, the display is pretty much uh, uh, like glued to the motherboard, so there is no way you can replace it. Plus, it has uh, those uh, uh, those uh, rubber that sit on uh, some uh, pins. You know, if you've ever been inside one of these calculators, and uh, I mean, you 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 would know that uh, if the display ever goes out, then that's it. You know, 99% of the time, you will never be able to get it back. So that is really really unfortunate. Imagine spending nearly $200 on a calculator and you dropped it or somehow the display breaks even if you are willing to fix it you cannot fix it, it you know it's just uh the whole thing is just gonna go to waste so that is uh, really sad these companies are just really greedy you know excuse my language but they are just greedy as fuck so that, that there is no excuse there is no other excuse HP used to be HP actually used to be the worst at that even taking this apart is actually a headache you know but the prime is much much easier to take it apart you know i can this uh the display on this thing is even replaceable i was successful at uh, replacing the display on the hp prime not that the display broke but i just uh, decided to do it uh you know just uh, i just i just decided to take one apart to see if uh the display was uh, replaceable and uh, it was indeed replaceable so yeah if you are not going to make uh, the repairability easier do not make it any harder i mean it's already hard enough there are certain certain revision of the ti inspire cx and even the cx2 uh is <laughs> to, to be able to take the cx2 apart you literally have to warm it up you have to heat it up you know because that's how bad it is <laughs> that's how bad it was designed it's, it's just uh it's, it's just awful you know it's just companies being greedy as fuck anyways next i would very much I would like to see, very much like to see uh, dedicated keys for uh, the everyday functions, like functions that are used the most, such as sine, cosine, tangent. As you can see, this calculator has uh, that, and the TI-89 did something similar, and the HP does that as well. So most calculators on the market, even Casio's calculators, I don't have anything right next to me right here, but uh, even Casio calculators, legacy Casio calculators, they have dedicated keys for those functions that are used frequently. So I would like to see a dedicated function, I mean dedicated uh, key for cosine, sine, and I would also like to see uh, the X at the top or near it, somewhere near the top, so that would be really nice. And I I, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of uh, the keys on, uh, on here. The keys are durable, but I just don't like the feel of it, you know, I don't like the feel. I'm, I really tend to prefer the keys or the keypads on uh, legacy calculators, you know, the 89 Titanium is my favorite keypad by far. You know, and after that, it's going to be uh, the 49G. Believe it or not, I like the keys on the 49G better than the 49G Plus. You know, that salt feeling, I really like that very much. And uh, after that, it's going to be uh, the TI-92 Plus. And the Voyage, I don't know, this is, uh, you know, it's on par with uh, the 92, I mean, the 89 right here. But uh, yeah, I like this one too. But this is now my favorite keypad, the HP Prime is, is not my favorite keypad, nor is the TI Inspire. I don't really like this one at all, you know, but the key, I don't know. I feel like they can do something about it. It's just, uh, I just don't like the feel of it. So that's just me being nitpicky. But the most important thing really uh, that I, I mentioned earlier is going to be, uh, you know, those dedicated keys for sine, cosine, tangent, and have the X over here. And also, please do something about the division sign, you know, make a... Uh, I put some, uh, 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 what I'm about to say is, uh, what I wanted to say is, uh, you know, they got to emphasize, you know, uh, the textbook notation here. So what I mean by textbook notation to be emphasized, uh, let's say I want to do, you know, something divided by, you know, whatever number, you know, once you hit the division sign, it's gonna, just going to put a bar, you know, you would think that after nearly 30 years, because this software is pretty much, you know, an improved version of the TI-92 software, which came out in 1995, you would think that uh, 
after nearly 30 years, you know, they would improve a lot of stuff. Well, a lot of stuff have improved, but minor things like this should have been improved as well. You know, just uh, have two division keys, you know, have the bar, you know, whatever. If people, that's what people like, you know, have the bar part, but give us also a dedicated one, you know. The extra step just to access the division sign, I think that shouldn't be a thing. It should be a dedicated button, you know. That's just uh, that's just uh, my take, okay. And also, please make the key backlit, you know. Make the key, make make the key backlit. You know, give us a backlight key, a keypad or keyboard. Not a single calculator on the market has that actually. So I don't know why calculators companies. I don't know why they don't do that. That that would be really handy. Having just having a colored display doesn't really cut it. You know, at night, if you are in a darker room, you can see the display, but you cannot see the keypad. So I don't know. So in, at that point, then what what is the point of having a, a colored screen at all? So yeah, there is that. So next, the uh, graphing window or not the graphing window, the graphing page. So the graphing page is really overwhelming. I, I literally, not only I don't like it, but I also hate it very much. I never do graphing on this calculator, you know. I either graph on HP, uh, which is the best in my opinion when it comes to graphing due to the zooming function that I just showed you. And it is also super fast, you know, graphing equations, you can you, you graph equation with literally no delay. You can move over, you know, with no delay, no regraph going on. So... This thing is slightly different. So if I double tap here, I can put my equation. So, okay, so right now I am in, uh, this is like an inequality. So it's, I don't even know how to get out of here. Uh, let me try to do it one more time. It's kind of hard to read this behind the camera. So let me try to do it one more time. So if I press erase, it doesn't really work. So I don't even know how to get out of here, which is a shame, damn shame. Maybe if I uh, let's like okay, maybe function, maybe that would cut it. Okay, so you see, this is just uh, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. So if you press the delete and uh, you you are you are intrigued by this inequality, and uh, you, you know, you just press y equal, and then it's just gonna take you to this inequality. And you would think that oh, I can probably just is uh, easily put my functions here, but if you put uh, this function for instance, x square. Oh, okay, well, I guess I was wrong, but uh, if you had the first one, you know, it's really overwhelming. Let's see y square one more time. You see, as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's, too, uh, it's too finicky, you know, it's too loaded. It's loaded with unnecessary, unnecessary stuff, you know, it's really overwhelming. And if I want to exit out of here, I have to go to menu, graph. And then function. So no, this just not this just not necessary. They just decided. I don't, I don't know. They decided to do this just for the sake of uh, being different than everybody else. No one in my knowledge ever complained about having a dedicated page for the uh, Y editor for entering your function. You know, this is so much convenient. You can put all your equations here. You know, and uh, if you don't want to graph the first one, just uncheck it and. Uh, Go and grab the second one. You know, this is how easy it is. Most calculators have this uh, way of doing graphs. Even the HP Prime does it that way. But <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes being different than everybody else does not really help. It just makes uh, people's lives a lot harder. You know, I don't I don't like the graphing features on here. The graphing is fast. It has a ton of features. You know, it does some stuff slightly better than the HP. You know, but I just, I don't, I hate it so much that... <laughs> I don't I don't even use it because you know plus the screen is tiny this takes up space and uh it's, uh they they have all this stuff going on here it's just uh it's just uh it's, it's just overwhelming you know okay so yeah so next is going to be uh I already talk about the keys the graph and uh the repairability uh uh, when I talk about uh, uh, the key one once again, I should have talked about this earlier, but uh, I really would love for Texas Instrument to bring uh, the QWERTY back uh, like they had with the Voyage. You know, they stopped making this calculator. Well, this calculator came out in 2002. I can't remember uh, when uh, they stopped making it, maybe 2005 or 2006, but don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. I am never going to, uh, I don't care. Uh, I don't really Python is not my I don't I, I don't use Python a lot. 
I uh, I code mainly in C sharp. But even if the I say this in my HP video, even if uh, Texas Instrument also manages to uh, include all the object-oriented programming languages onto this calculator, you know I'm never going to use it because the key is just a, it's just a waste of time to me. You know I don't have that kind of time. For the people who literally sit down and, and write code on calculators, I have a lot of respect for those people because that is something I'm never going to do. I, I, I hope I'm never going to be that bored in life. You know, again, I'm not trying to diss those people, but it's just, uh, I'm, I'm just not used to it. And I'm not, I'm not even willing to learn how to use, how, how, how to be, how to be efficient with these kids because it's just ridiculous. You know, you used to have this. You know, just give us another inspire with uh, a QWERTY key keyboard and give uh, the SRT one to French people. I don't know which one German use, but uh, give people what they want. You know, bring back the QWERTY and um, it's obviously it's not going to be allowed on exams and stuff. But you managed to have this for for more than a decade. You know, with the ninety five, I mean the the ninety two, you had the ninety two in nineteen ninety five. And you had this in 2002, and uh, it went on sale until 2006 or 2005. I can't quite remember, but you had you had an accuracy calculator on the market for more than a decade. I'm pretty sure you can you can manage to give us an inspire with accuracy keyboard to make programming better. You know, it's 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 like Python. How many people even use Python on their calculator? You know, almost it's almost non-existent. You know, when people buy these calculators, they don't buy like uh, with the uh, programming in mind you know even though a small amount of people might not everybody not everybody does that you know so if you are going to include python you might as well just give us you know a character with a keyword keyboard that's going to make uh, the programming experience a lot better so yeah and uh i think uh that's uh, pretty much everything i wanted to say about this calculator and uh yeah and also the software you know the software could definitely uh, be better uh, like i mentioned earlier Text Instrument has been using the same software for pff, since since 1995, you know, <laughs> and uh, pff, yeah, the software can definitely be better. Uh, you know, they can copy certain stuff from HP. You know, they do all the time. <laughs> they can copy each other, see which one is uh, doing what better. But uh, I don't have a I don't have a lot I don't have I don't really have a lot of negatives. To say about the software you know but uh, the equation solver or yeah certain stuff can be you know can be uh, can, can be can be made easier you know i'm i'm never even going to well i guess i can only wish this is probably something they are never going to do that is a rpn entry <laughs> ATI inspired with the rpn is going to be oh whew, boy oh boy oh boy <laughs> but that's probably never going to happen so i'm not even gonna I'm, I'm not even going to ask them to do that. They're probably never going to do that. And also the design, you know, we've had this calculator for more than 10 years. I mean, come on now. This came out in 2000, 2011. And we are, it's 2022. And the Inspire CX2 has the same design. The key placement are the same. As a matter of fact, we've had this design for pretty much uh, since, 2000, since 2010, actually. Since 2010. I can't quite remember when the first click pad came out. I believe they had a like a like a swappable key, like a touchpad for that. I don't know, but this one is from 2010, and as you can see, the button placements are pre, is pretty much the same for both calculators. So since 2010, it's pretty much the same design. And when it comes to the functionalities, these two, even uh, the CX2, has pretty much the same function functionalities as uh, this one from 2010 for the most part. You know, uh, to say that. Uh, if you were coming from a, 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 this one right here, you are not, uh, the CX2 is not going to be a new territory for you. So yeah, that is that. Uh, yeah, that's it uh, for this video. Again, I didn't want to make it any longer. <laughs> Every time I say that, I always manage to uh, get 20 minutes out of the video, but I guess it is what it is. My videos are not scripted. I keep saying this, but you know, but they really aren't. And uh, I really shouldn't, ha shouldn't have to say this, but uh, Texas Instrument is the kind of company that needs to be told to stop using USB, micro USB, okay? USB-C is a new standard. You know, they probably could have done that with uh, Inspire CX2 in 2019. They probably could have. But I don't really blame them that, that much because now a lot of cell phones even, didn't even have a, a USB Type-C in, uh, in 2019. So I'm not mad about that. But yeah, just uh, whenever you 
decided to come up with a new text instrument calculator just make sure it has usb type c and uh yeah that's uh, that's all i wanted to say if you have any questions just make sure you put in the comment section